So hey guys, I'm going to show you a quick tutorial and this is going to be another example of opening a door in Unity, but this is going to be using a trigger event. But this is just going to be a pure example, it's not going to be the ins and outs of making the perfect system, but it'll be show you how to do it and then you can extend it as you want. So I will be releasing ones alongside this and this will be a free asset which I will release all of the versions of being able to open a doll onto the asset store as a free package. So I'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out. So in this example, we'll walk into the collider in the front. Then we can walk one into the back and it will close the door. So one will open and one will close and then the triggers, all the things will disappear and I'll give you the examples of how to make them reappear or not. But it's just a simple one to open a door, close a door on a trigger event. So you can skip this next part if you know how to create an animation for a door. And I will leave a annotation in the description so you can skip to the time where you will skip past this. So with any door or any object that you have and you want to rotate it, you will need to make sure that it has a pivot on whichever side you want to rotate the door from. So because I brought this in a 3D program, I put the pivot on this left side. So when I rotate along this pivot, I get it perfectly as is here. Sometimes you might need to go to the top and use the toggle tool to toggle the handle and it might be pivot or center. So you need to set it to pivot to be able to pivot from it. If not, you could create an empty game object, place it on whichever side you want your pivot to be, then parent the door to that empty game object and then you will be able to rotate the empty game object as if it's got a pivot on the object. But in this case, it's just an object by itself. What we want to do is actually create an animation for this door for opening and closing. So if you select an object or if you can do it if you had an empty game object as well, but you can select this object, go window, animation, then animation. I've got the animation here. You can dock it wherever you want. We can create a new animation and we can just call this door open. Then when we've got our timeline, we can just press the record button in the top left here. Then what we could do is hold control and just with the rotate tool selected, rotate back and then rotate forward. So we set a first keyframe here, because if not, we could just click the, we could set a keyframe, but we'll then scrub across to one second and then we'll hold control and just move to 90 degrees. So then we've got an opening animation then what we can do is go create a new clip on the drop down and put door close. What we can do is then we'll open up door open again, select over the four keyframes, press control C, go back to the door close, paste those in. And what we can do is grab the first set of keyframes, move them across, move the last set. So we're going to just swap them around. So they're at one second each. So it's just going to be this complete reverse. And the key complete reverse from opening is would be closing. So we've got two sets of animations there. So now we need window animation and animator. On our animator, we have our new animator. And if you need to click on it, you can click on whatever the name of your model would be. And it will have created an actual animation controller. Then we have door close, door open. But that plays when we start. We don't want that. So we want to right click create state and empty. Then when we've got an empty state, we can just call this as idle because we don't want to play an animation when we first start on idle. We want to make sure that idle is the default layer so it just doesn't do anything. If you go back to the scene, select both of these actual animations and untick loop time. Then once we're there, we'll create a new script. And what we'll do is we'll right click, create C sharp script in the project panel and call this trigger door controller. I'll just call this two because I already had one called trigger door controller. And then what we'll do is we'll get rid of the starting methods. And what we can do is start by writing square brackets serialized field. So we'll have a private animator, which will be to get the actual animator controller that we're using. And then we can just call this my door and I'll set it equal to null. So we don't get any um, yellow exceptions in unity. Then we'll have another square bracket serialized field private bool will set it to will say whether we can have an open or a close trigger so we'll set that equal to false because we don't want to specify at the start we can have another private bool close trigger set that equal to false as well then down here we need to do our trigger event so we'll say private void on trigger enter and when i press tab it will auto fill this in for me so we have collider other which is the parameters that we use to reference that 
it'll be the collider that we walk into and we've just given it a name of other. In the left and right facing curly brackets, we'll say that if other.compare tag and then in brackets in quotes is player or the tag of which we will have an object that will walk into the actual trigger event. And we'll say if and in brackets open trigger is true. So this just means is true. If we put an exclamation mark, it would mean is false. So if open trigger is true at any time, we can say my door dot play open brackets in quotes. And we can just call this door open, which was the name of our animation. Then we can say zero for the hash name and 0, 0.0 F for the time. So we can keep this by default and then we could say game object dot set active is false because that's when when we walk into it, it'll just disappear. You don't need that, but you can. Then we can use else if close trigger and then we can put two left and right first in curly brackets and we can do pretty much the same thing as above. We'll just copy and paste it in and instead of door close, we'll have, I mean door open, we'll have door close and then we'll have exactly the same. Then I will go back and drop it and just dock the actual animation there. And I've got two triggers, which is just boxes with a box collider. And both of the box colliders are set to is trigger. We can add our script to these two objects, which is our trigger door two. And then we can specify, we need to add the door to these. So we can make sure we've collected, selected both. And we can add the single model door to that. We can select the open trigger and we'll say that it is an open trigger and the second one, which is going to be a closed trigger. We could, if we had multiple doors with multiple animations, we could go back into this script and create a variable, which is just a string. And then we could put the string value into here and then we could specify it in the inspector. So I'll give you the example. So like so, I created two private strings, set them equal to the name of our animations and I just put them in here as a variable. And then in our object here, you can see that now door open and door close has a name and you can specify different names of animations if you had multiple triggers with multiple different types of doors, for instance. Then you need to make sure that with your FPS controller is just something from the Unity standard assets that you set that equal to player by clicking on the drop down. Then when you press play, we'll drop in. We've got the trigger there. We can walk into it. We open the door. We got rid of that trigger. We can walk through. We close it. If it was some functionality for your game, that when you've walked through somewhere, it closes and you can ever get back. But of course, because I don't have walls, I can just walk around. But that which is the simple basis of creating a trigger, making your animations, making those just happen and then have different instances of how we can control it and make it usable throughout different levels. So hopefully this helped you out. Be sure to check out my great assets on the Unity store, check out my community discord and support me on Patreon if you want to support the channel. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.